Al Malhamat al Kubra is an apocalyptic great battle to occur in the end times, according to Islamic eschatology. The Malhamat al Kubra is prophesied to be the most ruthless battle in human history. It generally corresponds to the Battle of Armageddon in Christian eschatology and occurs soon before the emergence of the Dajjal, Antichrist. This battle is said to occur after the Muslims and Christian Romans victoriously fight alongside each other against a common enemy. Following their victory, a conflict will break out in which a Christian claims that the cross brought them victory. A Muslim in response claims that God brought them victory. This culminates in the Malham al-Kubra, an apocalyptic scale battle so intense that even if a bird were to pass their flanks, it would fall down dead before reaching the end. Yusair bin Jabir reported, once there blew a red storm in Kufa, that there came a person who had nothing to say but these words, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, the last hour has come. He, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, was sitting, reclining against something. And he said, the last hour would not come until the people divide inheritance and rejoice over booty. And then, said pointing towards Syria, the enemy shall muster strength against Muslims. And the Muslims will muster strength against them, meaning Syrians. I said, you mean Rome? And he said, yes. And there would be a terrible fight. And the Muslims would prepare a detachment for fighting unto death so that they may not return but victorious. They will fight until night will intervene them. Both sides will return without being victorious and both will be wiped out. The Muslims will again prepare a detachment for fighting unto death so that they may not return but victorious. When it would be the fourth day, a new detachment out of the remnant of the Muslims would be prepared and Allah will decree that the enemy should be routed and they would fight such a fight the like of which would not be seen so much so that even if a bird were to pass their flanks it would fall down dead before reaching the end of them that when counting would be done only one out of a hundred men related to one another would be found alive so what can be the joy at the spoils of such war? And what inheritance would be divided? They would be in this very state and they would hear of a calamity more horrible than this. And a cry would reach them, the Dajjal has taken your place among your offspring. They will therefore throw away what would be in their hands and go forward sending 10 horsemen as a scouting party. Allah's Messenger, may peace be upon him, said, I know their names, and the names of their forefathers, and the color of their horses. They will be the best horsemen on the surface of the earth on that day, or amongst the best horsemen on the surface of the earth on that day. The Malhamat al-Kubra is detailed in multiple hadith narrations with varying details. However, the basic narrative framework of the cycle of prophecies found in Islamic eschatology is as follows. This battle is said to occur after the Muslims and Christian Romans victoriously fight alongside each other against a common enemy. Following their victory, a conflict will break out in which a Christian claims that the cross brought them victory. A Muslim in response claims that God brought them victory and proceeds to destroy the cross. 
which leads to further reprisals from the Christian side. This culminates in the Malham al-Kubra, an apocalyptic scale battle so intense, the traditional account continues in the immediate wake of this battle, Constantinople will be conquered by the Muslims, which will be followed by the coming of the Antichrist, known in Arabic as the Jal, which will be followed by the second coming, the descent of Jesus Christ, Isa. He will follow the religion of Muhammad and will pray behind Mahdi. Certain places are significant in the Malham al-Kubra narrative cycle. One of these significant locations is Dabiq, Syria, where many texts say it'll take place. Alexandria, Egypt, Damascus, and Jerusalem are also significant places in the prophecies. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam as saying, the last hour would not come until the Romans would land at Al-A'maq, valleys in Antioch, southern Turkey, or in Dabiq, a plain near Aleppo, Syria. An army consisting of the best soldiers of the people of the earth at that time will come from Medina to counteract them. When they will arrange themselves in ranks, the Romans would say, do not stand between us and those Muslims who took prisoners from among us. Let us fight with them. And the Muslims would say, nay, by Allah, we would never get aside from you and from our brethren that you may fight them. They will then fight and a third part of the army would run away, whom Allah will never forgive. A third part of the army will die fighting, which would be constituted of excellent shaheed in Allah's eye. And the third who would never be put to trial would win, and they would be conquerors of Constantinople. And as they would be busy in distributing the spoils of war, after hanging their swords by the olive tree, the Satan would cry, the Dajjal has taken your place among your family. They would then come out, but it would be of no avail. And they would come to Syria. He would come out while they would be still preparing themselves for battle, drawing up the ranks. Certainly, the time of prayer shall come. And then Isa, Jesus, peace be upon him, son of Mary, would descend and would lead them in prayer. When the enemy of Allah would see him, it would disappear just as the salt dissolves itself in water. And if he, Isa alayhi salam, were not to confront them at all, even then it would dissolve completely. But Allah would slay them by his hand and he would show them their blood on his lands. Auf bin Malik al-Asja'i said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during the battle of Tabuk said to him, there will be hudna, truce, between you and Bani al-Asfar, refers to the Romans. Then they will deceive you, break the truce, and will march against you under 80 banners. And each banner will have 10,000 soldiers. Once again, the prophetic description is most appropriate. While certain Arab tribes brandished flags as a means of boasting about their clan. Countries were not known by a flag system at the time. In the modern age, every country in the world is known by a flag on the world map. It may be that the Romans would rally together the full clout of its allegiance to attack the Muslims. This could imply that at least 80 countries will unite against Islam by dispatching 12,000 soldiers from each country which totals to numbering close to a million troops. That alone is sufficient evidence of the magnitude of the war which will take place. The Messenger وسلم, depicted a horrific scene during that battle. The statement is from a lengthy tradition which states, and they would fight such a fight, the likes of which would not be seen. So much so, that even if a bird were to pass their flanks, it would fall down dead before reaching the end. That when counting the deceased would be done, only one out of a hundred men related to one another would be found alive. 
The narration paints a gloomy image of the cataclysmic destruction the Great War will leave in its wake. The description by the Messenger وسلم, of the flying bird, which will barely have the opportunity to take flight when it will fall prey to the war, is indicative of the warfare capabilities of the modern age. This may indicate some sort of chemical warfare. Thus, the birds in the sky will even be affected by it. The Muslims will suffer great losses, but in the end, by the grace of Allah Almighty, victory will be ours. Abu Huraira said that the Prophet ﷺ said, when the battles occur, battalions or brigades of the Mawali, the best among the Arabs in terms of horses and arms. By then, Allah supports the religion of Islam. Nafi' bin Utbah said, the Prophet ﷺ said, you will attack the Arabian Peninsula and will open it, meaning Allah will enable you to conquer it. Then you will attack Faris, Persia, and will open, conquer it. Then you will attack the land of the Romans, and Allah will open, conquer it. Then you will attack the Dajjal, Antichrist, and Allah will open, conquer him. Abiyad Dada narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said, the fort bastion of Muslims on the day of the Malhama battle will be in Gota, next to near a city called Damascus, one of best cities in Hashem, greater Syria. Conquest of Constantinople, Rome, and the rest of Europe. The third, which will be the final war between the Romans and the Muslims, will result in the Muslims conquering Constantinople without any bloodshed, just by chanting the Tasbih, Subhanallah, and Takbir. Constantinople was the capital of the Byzantine Roman Empire. Today, this city is called Istanbul in Turkey, Turkey's largest city. Part of it is located in Asia, while the other part is in Europe. Constantinople referred to in Hadith seems to be a city of the enemies of Muslims. Therefore, this Constantinople of the end times is most likely not Istanbul. The conquest of Constantinople by Muslims in the end times is a very important prophecy of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, mentioned in several narrations. Abdullah bin Busr reports that the Prophet وسلم, said, between the Malhama and the conquest of the city, that is Constantinople, there will be six years, and the Dajjal, Antichrist, shall appear in the seventh. However, Mu'ad ibn Jabal narrated this hadith by stating that these events will occur within seven months, not years. He narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Malham al-Kubra, the conquest of Constantinople, and the coming of Dajjal, will occur within a period of seven months. Regarding the Jal, once Allah's Messenger وسلم, stood amongst the people, glorified and praised Allah as He deserved, and then mentioned, I warn you against him, that is the Dajjal. And there was no prophet but warned his nation against him. No doubt, Noah warned his nation against him. But I tell you about him something of which no prophet told his nation before me. You should know that he is one-eyed and Allah is not one-eyed. The Jal will come to a nation and enjoin them to follow him and they eventually will follow him. Since they are willing to follow the Jal, their land become fertile and various plants grow on it. Their cattle become fat and yield plenty of milk, and they truly live in prosperity. The Jal will also come to a nation and enjoin them to follow him, but they reject him. As the result, they become very poor and possess nothing. This is a very severe trial, particularly for the Bedouins or the common people. And he, Dajjal, will walk past some ruins and say, 
throw out your wealth, this all of treasuries and wealth that are stored in that ruins, just as a troop of bees of gold and silver and other jewelries without any tool or stone. This is a trial and test that Allah the Exalted gives to the people at that time. This is the Jal and his interaction with the people in this world is to bewitch those who just want to enjoy the pleasures of this world or being wretched in it. The other trial that he'll cause is that Allah will make the paradise and hell in his hand according to people's eyes. But in reality, his paradise is actually hell and his hell is paradise. At that point, Isa ibn Maryam, peace be upon him, will descend to the eastern minaret in Damascus and the believing slaves of Allah will gather around him. He will lead them towards the Dajjal, who at that time of the descent of Isa, peace be upon him, will be heading for Bayt al-Maqdis, Jerusalem. Isa will catch up with him at the gate of Lud, Lod, a place in Palestine near Bayt al-Maqdis. When the Dajjal sees him, he will start to melt like salt melting in water. But Isa, peace be upon him, will say to him, you will not get away from me. Then he will catch up with him and will slay him with a spear. Then Allah reveals to Jesus, I have brought forth servants of mine who no one can face in battle. So go, my servants, to Mount Tabur. Then Allah will send forth Gog and Magog, who will pour down from every slope, and they will pass by the Sea of Galilee and drink from it. Jesus, the Prophet of Allah, and his followers will be blockaded, whereby the mere head of a bull of theirs will be worth more to them than a hundred gold coins of yours today. And so Jesus and his followers will call upon Allah and he will send worms upon their napes and they will all die like one soul. Then Jesus, the Prophet of Allah and his followers will be taken down to the land and he will request someone to go down and risks his life to see what has happened. He descends believing that he will lose his life and finds that Gog and Magog are all dead. So he calls back to the others to bear glad tidings for their enemy has been destroyed. They will come out with their animals and they will not find a hand span of space except that it is filled with their stench and smell. Then Jesus, the Prophet of Allah and his followers, will call upon Allah and he will send flying beasts with necks like camels and they will take them away and toss them where Allah wills. Muslims under the leadership of Jesus will rule the world. Thauban said that the Prophet wasallam said, Allah, the exalted, unfolded for me the earth to the extent that I saw its eastern and western extremities. The kingdom of my ummah, nation, will reach as far as what has been unfolded to me. The two treasures, the red, that's Persian kingdom, and the white, Roman empire, were bestowed on me. The word of Islam will spread throughout the world, enter every home, and no one will be left who has not heard about Islam. Al-Miqdad ibn Aswad said, I heard the Prophet ﷺ say, Not a dwelling, house, whether of brick or fur, will remain on the surface of the earth, that Allah will not ensure that the word of Islam enters it, either honoring an honorable person or disgracing an abject person. It must be noted that many of the signs of Qiyamah are present, and the Muslims are facing difficulties all over the world. However, Rather than exerting our efforts in identifying these signs, we maximize our efforts in ibadah, dua, and preparing for the hereafter. A Bedouin asked the Prophet ﷺ about the hour, Qiyamah. He ﷺ said, 
it will surely come to pass. What have you prepared for it?